Hello everyone, I hope your quarantine is going well. I'm Harrison Hefley, this is my research paper presentation. Um, so just to start it off, the question uh, that I kind of worked off of was how did the Jacksonian, uh, Jacksonian era of American, um, really America in general in every sense, political, social, how did that era affect um, the United States for years to come? Um, I was interested in this topic, uh, number one, because I'm from the South and Jackson is such a kind of strangely respected but also controversial figure in Southern history. Um, you know, obviously, Southern guys, for some reason, uh, tend to relate to his whole backwoods dueler personality. Um, but on the larger scale, there was a lot of terrible things that he did when you think about the Indian Removal Act and um, obviously the mistreatment of uh, minorities, specifically African Americans, was very common in America during this period. So um, I was interested in Andrew Jackson, the person, but I kind of let that lead me to how, how did Andrew Jackson affect America as a whole and how did that last for years to come? So um, my answer to this question was that the Jacksonian era kind of set America on the path to what it has become today. Um, I would argue politically for sure, socially, um, and socially definitely as well. So um, the main points in this, I, I kind of started with um, how the Jacksonian era changed the, the life of the common man in a number of ways. Um, for one thing, Jackson showed how there was a path for the common man from to rise from being a nobody to prominence. I mean, he, he did it himself, and he became president of the United States. Um, also, the right to vote, um, what well, became much more uh, common. In some cases, even blacks gained the right to vote in the North. Um, and, and property rights went away, which was a huge change in, in American politics. Um, and uh, just in general, how the social order was kind of turned on its head during this period, you know, it... This is the first time it went from, um, it was unclear at first if it would be the Jeffersonian yeoman uh, running the country with their small farms or if it would be Hamilton with the with the elites running the country. And then kind of what came with Jackson was something completely new. It was, it was not expected and it, it changed the social order of the country. Um, and from there I kind of go into politically how he changed America, um, specifically party politics and uh, the use of media, which at the time would, would primarily be newspapers. Um, but this is when you really see, kind of starting with John Quincy Adams, that election of 1828, this very defined two-party system in America. Um, and figures like Martin Van Buren pushing for it really hard. Uh, the use of slander became very popular. And obviously those are things that have, they define American politics too today. You know, you watch one Trump debate or even one Democratic Party debate, like we've been seeing within the past year and, and slandering your opponents is a very common thing. Um, and the, and media people doing it, you know, for free on their own was very common. So that's kind of what I dive into next. And then, um, from there I go into the treatment of minorities and I really try and cover, um, minorities and women. I try and cover all of them. I, I start with how African Americans were treated and, um, you know, it's just, Clearly, it was terrible. Like, there's nothing else you can say about it. Plantation slavery was still common in the South. I mean, this is the rise of Jackson. You're looking at, you know, 1820 to 1840, and um, kind of the worst form of slavery is what was very popular in the South. And you could say, okay, well, they were free in the North, and sometimes they could vote. But there is a very small portion of people that saw African Americans as, as uh, deserving a right to an equal place in society as whites had. And so that's that's awful. And you know, Jackson didn't do much to change that. I kind of dive into how um, he and the other conservatives, um, c not the party, conservative in principle, uh, wanted to preserve white privilege any way they could. And um, a big part of that was keeping other people down. Um, you look at the Indians. Uh, the Indian Removal Act really is kind of a soft way that um, the Jacksonian, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, it's a soft way for Jackson to say, I can take the, I can take your land and um, I won't harm you in the future, but it left him a way out, as in, you know, there is there is a number of ways that he could work through the Indian Removal Act to uh, displace the Indians and also leave it open-ended so that in the future we could take their land, uh, even on the reservations we promised them west of the Mississippi. Um, and immigrant, you know, immigration at this time was not... Um, 
as common as it would be later, but what I would argue and what I do argue in my paper is the way that he treated blacks and um, women and the Indians made it okay and normal in America to mistreat people because of the color of their skin or where they're from. Um, and I think that legacy lasted and it affected how we would treat immigrants in the future, whether it be, um, you know, the Japanese and the Chinese coming to the West Coast um, into California or um, the increase in European migration uh, later in the 1800s um, or the treatment of Mexicans on, you know, the Mexican-American War was, was soon to come after Jackson. So I kind of look at how, how his treatment of minorities affected those, those future dealings. Um, and then lastly, I just, I drive into Jackson as a person and how did, who he was as a person, uh, shape the future of America. You know, I think about a guy with a questionable past who, who did a lot of questionable things, who became president. And obviously that's very relatable to today, whether you're a Trump supporter or not, you know, it's, it's more acceptable for there to be questions about a figure's past and let him run the country. And I think Jackson's the first time you see this, you know, we, we started with George Washington, questionably the most spotless figure in American history. And um, within 50 years, we were at Andrew Jackson. So um, really my conclusions from all this is that Andrew Jackson was really the first glimpse at what modern American politics and social life would be like. Uh, clearly it was different, um, but the way he acted... And um, the things that he did, you still see a lot of today with the party politics, uh, the treatment of minorities. Um, obviously, it's better, but it wasn't, you know, 70 years ago, we had segregated schools. And so um, he kind of put America on a, on a trend in a new direction that, that carried onward and is, still, and is still largely in play today. So um, that's about it, really, for my paper. I guess if I had to share one interesting fact that I took away from all this, it would be the fact that there were some, some blacks in the North who could vote and the fact that women across the entire country wouldn't be able to vote until the late 1800s. Because it's mind blowing to me that, um, in the South, blacks were being abused and tortured on plantations. And in the North, some of them could vote except Across all of those portions, women couldn't vote, and in the South, they might even be the slaves' masters. It's kind of a just a weird, weird time in America. Really illustrates um, how different the North and the South were, and and uh, I don't know, just a, a weird, fun, sad fact about Jacksonian era in American history. But that is my paper. Um, I think it'll be pretty good, and I hope everyone is staying safe and six feet apart.